All right, everyone, it is time. We are once again back for three dudes review. And this time we do have a special review, but I'm gonna let Joe kick it off and let you guys know exactly what we're playing today. Well, thank you, BA. And uh, this week we have a holiday album and uh, not just any holiday album, it is a Death Row Christmas album. That's right. The folks at Death Row that brought you Doggy Style, The Chronic, and Machiavelli bring you Death Row Christmas. All your favorite hits and all your favorite gunshots all on one fine, fine album. Wow. Actually, uh, no, it's a good album. 96 it came out, um, and uh, it was kind of more on the tail end of Death Row. At that point, all the big celebrities had left. Uh, Snoop is gone. Dr. Dre is gone. Uh, I want to say Tupac is dead at this point, maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if it was 96 or 97. Uh, who else was not there? Warren G, I don't think, was there at that point. So basically, Shug got all his money and they all left. So, but hey, who knows? It, it could be a diamond in the rough. Gotta be better than the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope so. But we're gonna go ahead and get this started. The first song is called Santa Claus Go Straight to the Ghetto. So, what you get started on? Let's start, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how you kick off a holiday album. Yeah, that one. I was feeling that one. Yeah, that was... But I'll kick it off. Yeah, I loved everything about that, actually. <laughs> no, the, the flow on all of these rappers were awesome. The bass line, amazing. Um, I mean, it just had such a good vibe to it. Even though they're talking about, you know, what it's like to be in the ghetto, in the hood and you know how Christmas is um, they did it in such a good way where like you 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 just feel it man you're like yo I know what you're talking about <laughs> even if you don't know what they're talking about like you know so I I think that was an A plus what a wonderful way to start off an album I that's all I can say what do you think about this one Joe um you know I, when I'm listening to it I wasn't even relating it to a Christmas song. I mean, it just was a good rap song, period. I mean, it it was really just an encompassing, great storytelling, great rapping, a hell of a bass line. Um, also, just, it, it it made you bob your head, you were smiling, you were, it was just like, yeah, all right, you know? And, um, and it wasn't laced with profanities, and, and you could understand everybody, and um, just, yeah, hell of a song. Like, if I was listening to that on a on a just a regular album, I'd be like, that's a hell of a track. I think it's a good, good song. That was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. That shit was fire. Um, that sample too. I knew, I knew it was from somebody that I've heard before. It's Isaac Hayes sample. Fire artist. If you guys haven't heard of him, you should definitely check him out. He's a bad mother. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't. Okay, B.A. got that reference. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was fire, man. I'm glad. This is a relief. Yeah. We've been struggling. Yeah. Uh, listen, listen, weeks. let's just hope that we, we're, we're going up yeah, on this coast so and not just plumbing down. Okay? I, hopefully, hopefully we can continue this trend. I want, I want to say one thing, though, before we go to the next one. That is the second best rap Christmas song I've ever heard. Mm. Run DMC, oh, uh, yeah. Christmas and, and Hollis uh, yeah. is, is still the best That's rap true. Christmas song. Yeah. All right. So this the next one is called Christmas Song. All right. So that one was a Christmas song. Mike, what did you think of that? Yeah, it's a good track. It ain't really my my flavor though. Um, I definitely like the first track a lot better. But it, no, it's a great uh, remake of a Christmas song that's definitely better than some of the ones I've heard you know it's I'd, de I'd rather listen to that than the original mm, okay it's got a little little jazz flavor to it huh? all right yeah what do you guys think I thought it was awesome I thought <laughs> I know it's so generic but it, honestly um, it was very unexpected for me I I had no idea what I was getting into uh, with this album I had some idea, but this, like, my expectations are, like, huge now. Like, I, after hearing the first two tracks, especially this one, I don't know what to expect. Like, it's it's just, man, that one, that one hit. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the voice, I mean, I never heard of Danny Boy, but uh, he did a great job. Um, it, it, his voice was smooth with the track. Um, it, was, it was slow, but it was definitely a good slow, and... 
I would definitely listen to this song again for sure, without a doubt. What do you think, Joe? Oh, um, you know, th this song is probably from like the 19, going back to like the, almost the 1940s. Uh, it was by Mel Tone, who originally mm. wrote it and, and did it. And then most popular version is by Nat Cole. Uh, he, he's probably the most well-known version. This is a different spin. I love the jazz. I love the 90s R&B going on. The, the fusion between the two is just really cool. Yeah. And it just, it, 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 like, it, it makes you think holidays, obviously. And it's like, hey, let's make a baby on Christmas. You know, like, it, it, at first I thought, like, man, when did R. Kelly work with Death Row? And then I was like, I don't think he did. So I double checked and I was like, okay, I don't know who this Danny Boy guy is, but I, I loved it. It was smooth, it was nice. And then, like you said, it was a good slow, you know? Like the album last week was just slow and it was slow, slow, bad slow. Like, like molasses across the street, granny style slow. This was like smooth slow, like, hey, baby, slow down. I, I liked it. I liked it. We're two for two, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. So let's hit Leave the next it to one. Death oh. to make baby making Christmas. Oh, well, yeah, I had no idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so the next track is called "I Wish." All right, I uh, I really like that one. But before we get to my opinion, that song was "I Wish." Joe, what did you think about it? Um, well, it wasn't as good as the first two, mm -hmm. but it wasn't bad either. Um. The one guy was really good with the flows. I mean, I really enjoyed the one guy. He, he just sounded like he was a natural on the track. It just sounded like he had the beat. Like, everything just sunk up. Then there was another guy who kind of did that, like, just, like, he kind of flowed, but it wasn't like a f flow flow. It was like that, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. But da -da -da -da, my flow, my flow, da -da -da -da. Mm. And, I mean, he was just kind of <laughs> putting words together that rhymed, but they just weren't on like you know flow they're like they're rhyming words but not on the flow as well um and uh but you know it's kind of a song that, to me it was about like uh redemption and uh and 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 you know wishing that they were with the ones that they have lost and you know maybe changing paths and stuff like that so it was a good message on the song too um yeah not a bad song yeah okay I uh, I thought it was good, uh, maybe not as good as the first two, but um, I was actually listening to the lyrics of this song, and man, they were speaking real in this song, man. Like, this was, like, lyrically, like, the stuff that they were saying is a good message. It's, like, legit a good message. Like, you should live by that message. Um, and chillin', I, no killing. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Chillin', no killing this, you know, holiday season. We don't want that, you know? So, um, yeah, I really appreciated that um, out of anything. But, yeah, I mean, I definitely think, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the rappers here, uh, the flow could have been a little bit better. Um, but, I mean, all in all, still a good song. Like, I would definitely still listen to that song again. Um, so, I'm, I'm happy with it. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I like it a lot, man. It reminded me of De La Soul. Yeah, yeah, that positive, that positive hip hop. You know, oh, no. Yeah, so okay. I really like, I like hip hop like that, okay, man. I can listen to stuff like that all day. But, um, good yeah. call with the De La Soul. Yeah. Like, good call. Yeah, that was fire. I liked it. All right, cool. So we're moving in to this uh, next song. This one is called Silver Bells. Who he wants did, to yeah. roast this one first? I guess BA's up first yeah, on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm not going to roast, okay? Because I don't like roasting, okay? <laughs> but, you don't like roast? It's delicious. Yeah, yeah but no, I no. just bought a smoker. You guys should pass it. Was that a good song, though? Uh, I feel that they could have been better, okay? Uh, I'm not going to say the song was trash, okay? Because the song wasn't trash. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I feel like vocally the song could have uh, stood out better than what I heard. Um, but other than that, yeah, I love the instrumental. It was great. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's a classic song, so you can't go wrong, but you just at the same time maybe have a little bit different vocalist that's all i'm gonna say what do you think mike yeah the vocals were weak oh, man. It really good <laughs> instrumental but the vocals failed us i was so hyped too hearing that intro with the with the drum fill and everything i was like uh-oh and then the vocals came in and i was like all right never mind 
So kind of disappointing. Dang. What you got, Joe? Uh, well, before I give my critique of this uh, song, I do want to give a little shout out. Can I give a shout out? Can I give a shout out? Go for it. Right. 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 Uh, I want to give a shout out to two Nicole's One podcast. Um, uh, friends of mine, uh, hopefully we're going to do some cross-promotional stuff with here in the future. And uh, before I get your hate messages and all that garbage that you guys love to send me, um, I'm just giving them a shout out and letting you know they're a good podcast and check them out. And hopefully we'll do some stuff after the first of the year with them and then with us. And, you know, bring a woman's perspective maybe to the three dudes and vice versa. So, that would be cool. Yeah, Sounds yeah. Good. Shout out to the Nicoles. That's for right. Sure. Two Nicoles, for one sure. podcast. Check Definitely. them out. All right. So now to my critiquing. Um... Love the instrumental. I mean, it was just another good jazz R&B fusion thing going on there. Uh, the drums, the the, uh, the the what do you call them? The wind chimes. The the whole the whole vibe of the song instrumentally was great. And then the singer sang, and you just realize at that moment who was the stripper that was giving head to Suge Knight or one of the oh, dog geez, pound to get on know. this track. All right, once again. I mean, I'm just saying, like you could tell the minute she opened her voice, she wasn't a professional singer. She was a karaoke <laughs> singer at best. Yeah. <laughs> And it was just like, oh god, like you know, maybe she was a friend of the family, you know? Oh yeah, <laughs> a friend of the family. That's right. I, it yeah. could be. I mean, hey, maybe, we don't know. We don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, but you know, I got a lot of friends in my family that I wouldn't put on my album. But you know, if somebody was having sex with me, I'd be like, yeah, maybe we could do something. Oh. But um, anyways, I it just that, that that's the only thing. Like I said, the different singer. Like, you could tell iTunes wasn't around, or Autotune, I should say, wasn't around at that point, and it just, <laughs> she didn't have a powerful voice, she didn't have an on-key voice, and it's like Macy Gray, you know, love the instrumental, but then Macy Gray sings, and it's like, wow, who ate a pack of cigarettes this morning? Um, but, I mean, I Try is not a bad song, but it's just the, uh, 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 for like an hour? Uh. All right. But anyways, yeah, I, okay. okay. One, okay. one bad song out of four. No, it wasn't okay. a bad song. It just wasn't a good song. It wasn't. It, listen, we've had a lot worse. Yeah. I mean. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this next one is called "Peaceful Christmas." Okay. So that song was "Peaceful Christmas." Uh, Joe, what do you think of it? I actually really liked it. It was a, it was a redemption from the last song. Um, so. Danny Boy, I wish he had a bigger career. I don't know why he didn't. Because um, he signed a death row. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> but, no, honestly, I mean, this guy is R. Kelly sounding. Like We, I mean, we were kind of talking while the song was going on, and like, he just has a hell of a voice, and the instrumentals are great. I mean, anything this guy's touching on this track, I'm all about right now. It's good stuff. So this track, to me, uh, you know, it was a it was a holiday yuletide log of fire. Mm. All right, yeah, I agree. Um, but this goes to show you, man, that bad record deals mm-hmm. destroy anybody's career, no matter how good they are. Look at Ashanti. Oh man, Ashanti's still good. Though. But hey, her record deal killed her career. Uh-huh. Sad. It's a great track too, man. Yeah. Danny Boy, where you at, man? Yeah, Danny Boy. Danny if you Boy. happen to see this, listen. Don't tell Shug, by the way. But just uh. <laughs> Listen, you guys are afraid of Takashi. I ain't. Shug, on the other hand, but um, no. Listen, man. If this guy ever does catch our little our little world here, you know, we we got some respect for you, dude. And you know, give us a shout out, man. We'll, we'll put you in our little studio, and you can sing for the masses, and you know, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. That was that was fire. To be honest with you, Danny Boy. He made he made that song. He made that song. Like the instrumental was great as well. These instrumentals, by the way, fire. Everything I'm hearing instrumental wise has been great so far. But Danny Boy, I must say, he made the song. Um, without him, it wouldn't be what it is. And I I don't know why he obviously. I mean, obviously Death Row. But I mean, he eh, should have large part. It, I don't know if that's the whole part, but it's a large part, probably. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he could have gone more places. You know, what? You before know? we say anything else and make ourselves look stupid, let's make sure let's let's Wikipedia Danny Boy. Um, let's see. 
Okay, he's still alive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so at least he's still alive. Yeah, that's good. Well, that, well with death row, it's a 50 50, so yeah. <laughs> you have to double check. <laughs> they could be dead. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that, unfortunately, it's true. Yeah. But um, other than that, I thought this song was great, and um, I hope to hear more from Danny Boy. Yeah. That would be awesome. Uh, to, to make a quote here. Oh, Danny boy, we'd love to hear your pipes are calling. What is that from? Oh, Danny boy, it's the, uh, uh, the Irish National uh, Anthem. Uh, yeah. All right, okay. Uh, I know I've heard it. You're a could... black guy with red hair. <laughs> you have Irish <laughs> no, in you somewhere. I've heard it. I've heard it. I just, it just wasn't clicking. All right. <laughs> Anyways, next song. Um, <laughs> this one is called Christmas in the Ghetto. All right, so that was Christmas in the Ghetto. What did you think, Mike? I like the beat. Um, it's kind of depressing, though, the vocals, man. But that's just the reality, man. Like, a lot of people think that Christmas is all, you know, happy. But it is for most people, you know. But, you know, for poor people, bro, it's really not that good, man. Like, they don't get all the gifts, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it is kind of sad, bro. But that's just the reality of the situation, man. Like, people... Poverty, Christmas is a lot different for people with poverty, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I like it, it's real, you know what I'm saying? It gives you a different perspective on <laughs> on how Christmas is for some other people that aren't as fortunate as you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I thought it was good. I thought they were talking pretty real in the record. I think that Christmas is different in the ghetto. Um, you know, you go to school and everyone, all the kids say how many presents and things that they got for Christmas, but when you're you know don't have a lot of income coming in um you know you're not going to be like one of those kids that receive a bunch of gifts under the tree you know it's just not how it works um so yeah i mean i think it was cool how they were basically saying this is how christmas is in the ghetto you know you don't just get everything you might get one thing you might get a couple things, but that's it. Like, you know, um, just be thankful for what you got and keep it moving. So I can appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, vocal wise, I really wasn't, uh, I don't know. I really, the, the first part of it, I really wasn't liking the verse. Uh, the second verse came in, it was better. Um, but I think that, I think if different rappers were on it, maybe it could have been a little bit better vibe, but instrumental wise, fire <laughs> as always. So what do you think, Jim? I uh, agree with you on the instrumental. Again, just whoever's producing these tracks is just, they, they're just kicking some ass with the producing I mean, these three tracks. Um, the, the first and the third verse in this song, the deliveries, was almost like gangsters trying to be gangsters. Like, you know how, like, whenever you get that guy and he's just like, yo, yeah, 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 just playing the tough guy, like, to the point where it's almost like, are you really a tough guy or are you just trying to be a tough guy that's what i got off those two particular verses uh the middle verse um it got more real the guy was actually like probably talking about his christmases as a kid you know about oh we only got like one board game and you know, between our, me and my brothers and sisters is what we got because mom didn't have money and dad wasn't around to give us anything and, you know, it kind of sucked. It wasn't as great as everybody makes Christmas out to be because we'd go around other kids and they'd have this and they'd have that and we didn't have this. Um, you know, so he got real with it and his delivery was more subtle. Uh, it wasn't like over the top. Um, you know, it, one of the other two verses, I kind of almost drowned them out because it was too over the top, you know. Like, Tupac could be over the top at times, but he was talking about more, like, hardcore stuff. Like, you know, he'd be like, I'm gonna shoot you, I'm gonna fuck your bitch. You know, and he'd be getting all, <laughs> all, all, all with it. And, and when you get like that, you get fired up, and, and it's, like, more understandable. When you're talking about, you know... Christmas tree got lights that run out and I don't like it. It's like, <laughs> take it down a notch. <laughs> <coughs> that's, that's, that's the whole, you know, I said. All right, okay. So we keep it moving. Uh, this next track coming up is called Silent Night. All right, so that one was Silent Night. Guys, that was a great track. Here's my opinion on it real quick. Um, Too quick. <laughs> Instrumental, great. Um, but here's my thing: the vocalists weren't even that bad. My thing was, it's really weird to hear people coming from Death Row 
talking about, you know, the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I, and I get it. There's a lot of, like, you know. Because more likely put holes in your spirit. <laughs> It was just very strange, like, out, it was out of place to me, put it that way. Um, out of all the songs that I've heard so far, that one just felt out of place. Um, but other than that, yeah, instrumental was, was pretty good, um, you know, for a Silent Night song. Not the best, but it was it was pretty good. Um, what do you think of it, Joe? Um, no, I agree with you, again, on the, on the vocals. Uh, they were, uh, if I was in a, a church, and I heard that, I'd be like, that's a really good performance for a church. Mm -hmm. But as I'm listening to a professional album, I'm like, eh, hey, it was good, but it wasn't like, wow. Like, to yeah. me, like, I'm going to say Voice to Men in terms of Silent Night is my all-time favorite. Like, that, and, and those four guys were probably the greatest vocal group ever. I'm mm. just going to say that, and I don't care what anybody wants to say, all the temptations and this and that. Mm, yeah, no, some, mm. yeah, there are a lot of great ones. Yeah. But Boys to Men, man, I've seen them live numerous times and they can do things vocally that just are like, oh, you know. But that's just me. But anyways, um, instrumental again, another like fire. I like the jazzy uh, R&B fusions again. I mean, they're just, they're, these tracks are great and they almost sound live. Mm -hmm. Like they, 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 like on the slower, more gospel -y or Christmassy songs they almost sound live in studio with the artist singing as opposed to being edited in later mm -hmm. you know like the rap songs you can clearly tell they're rapping and then they have the beat yeah. you know these sound like they're performed live in the studio and maybe some like light dubbing here and there to make them a little more powerful but that's what I like too I like that live sound to them yeah um but yeah, it was a good track. It's not like, you know, again, not a bad track. Good track. Okay. Yeah, I liked it a lot, actually. Um, especially as it kept going towards the end when they added the choir in and everything. I thought it was pretty dope, man. Um, yeah, like I said, I was, I was saying earlier, if they played this type of music at church, I would definitely be going to church a little bit more often. But <laughs> I don't know, man. That's, that's, a, that's a good uh, church track right there, man. I won't be going to church too often, though, because I'm Jewish. Okay. <laughs> Not against anybody goes to church. But, no, I liked it a lot, man. Um, it is kind of weird hearing this being on the death row <laughs> yeah. album. Yeah. yeah. You don't put it... It's a pleasant surprise. It's, right. it's not bad. It's just kind of like, oh, I wasn't expecting this, you know. Yeah. But I like it, man. It's like when whenever like you eat something spicy, but you don't get heartburn after. It's like, mm. oh, yeah. 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 That's good. Or you order pizza hot, and it's good. <laughs> It doesn't happen too often anymore. Yeah, maybe you're really hungry. <laughs> Mike, I just realized something. If Waldo and Oscar the Grouch oh had a my. child, oh geez, you'd kind of that you'd be the afterbirth right now. Wow, that's rough. <laughs> that's that was fresh, man. I mean, you, know, if it, like, you got rough. the Waldo hat and and you got the green Oscar this is the Grouch. Christmas colors. I, it right? is, it is. But the way it's rocking, I. I mean, I, I like both characters, so I'm okay. Hey man, I look good, so I feel good. He's, you he, know what I'm he saying? He looks good. He feels good. I don't know what's Ladies. up with your pants, though, man. What's up with your pants, My bro? pants? Well, you Why know. Why are you wearing blue pants? You should have worn some green because pants. Because blue is the color of Hanukkah. Oh, my bad. Yeah, dissing on the Hanukkahs. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, simple. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah it's a, it was kind hey. of a shout out to Hanukkah there. All right. Okay. And you know, What's I, up didn't, next? I didn't have any red sweatpants. <laughs> See, you would be a good Santa Claus, like. Well, uh, I actually, uh, I like have at played, the mall. You I feel have, me? I have <laughs> played Santa before. Yes, I have a Santa suit. And if anybody out there wants to book me for your holiday parties after COVID, I will be more than happy to play your Santa. You could sit on my lap and tell me what you he want. You could wow. DJ too, so. I could DJ. I've done he both. Could be the your, same time. your Santa DJ. By the way, if there's any children watching this, I am a Santa helper. Santa helper. I work for Santa. Okay, so this next track is called Be Thankful. All right, so that track was called Be Thankful. Um, I'm thankful it's over. <laughs> that's a lot to be thankful for, um, but it's not a lot at the same time. So once again, the instrumental, hot. Like it was hotness. It's smooth, just mm -hmm. nice. Once again, R&B feel to it. Just ooh, good. 
I don't know about what Nate Dogg was doing. And oh, I, I can tell you what Nate Dogg was doing. I, and I really don't know it's about It's called who. Hennessy and Hydro. <laughs> and they were doing lots of it. Because that track was... Wow. <laughs> it was all over the place. Uh, Butch Cassidy, I... I he should have uh, stayed dead in the movie. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was... Th- Bad performance. Bad performance. That's all I can say. They they needed to come harder on this. Let's track. just put it this way. The three of us, if we would have done that, would probably have sounded the same. <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. It was... I don't want to love you no more. Thank you, girl. And it was like, what the hell? It was like that. I was like, what the hell are we listening to? Oh, that was rough. What <laughs> What'd you think about it, Mike? I, I like the beat, man. I could dance to the beat. You know Absolutely. Yeah. I was getting down to it, but I mean, the, the beat, vocals were just off. The, oh. Off. They weren't even like, they should just turn their mic down. And and I can just see them in the studio. They thought they were doing something like so, like, yo, yo, man, like, listen, this is going to be fire. It's fire. Listen to us. Oh, no, water. Look at the girls, man. They're going to love this. Look at the bottom of the in the studio right now. Yeah. You could see that. Mm-hmm. Literally, if you listen to the track, you can see it's almost like my girl likes to party all the time. Where like they were so high on cocaine, they Bro, thought they I were like making. That that's a good song. That it's song a, is fire. I love that song, but like you can tell that they were so freaking strung out on their minds. And if you ever watch the video, you can really yeah, tell because yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. you know Eddie's just like every day the girls wanna party, and then like Rick James is like my girl likes to, and you can just tell they thought they were making like the greatest song. Ever <laughs> and yes, it is a decent song, way better than this past one there. But at the same time, that that altered mind <laughs> is there. It's like yeah, dang, that wow. was an altered mind, great hit. Mm-hmm. Too uh, much uh, eggnog. Well, well no. is that the next song? No, it's gone. <laughs> oh, it's gone. <laughs> That could be that a great like a uh, We should yeah. make that Christmas. That's too our next. That's the Christmas song. Yeah. Yeah. We were drinking too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this next one is called "On This Glorious Day." All right. <laughs> so guys, um, a lot to say on this track, but once again, that track was called "On This Glorious Day." Um, it wasn't glorious. No, no, it wasn't glorious. Um, I'm going to let Joe go first on this one. Uh, all right. So, again, another <laughs> fire instrumental. Um, it really is. The instrumentals, the production of the, of the music is just really, really good on this album so far. Like, uh, this might be the best produced instrumental album I think we've done at this point in terms of beautifulness of the music. I guess that that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so... <laughs> Here's the deal with the singing. I'm not going to say they were bad singers, because they weren't. They weren't good singers. It, It's kind of like... You know like there's people who go to karaoke, and they think they're the greatest singer. Like, they're like, ah, oh, American Idol screwed me. It was a rigged system. Or, ah, oh, you know, I could do what they do. They just haven't discovered me yet. Or, oh, you know... That's what this felt like. It was like these, these guys either A, were friends with somebody or Shook's just running out of talent and he's just calling people in and be like, yo, you got a little bit of a voice, get on the track. It, it, they weren't professional singers. They were singers. They had enough voice to KB, like I said, a church, karaoke, um, local talent show. But to be a professional singer, you know... When you hear a professional singer as opposed to an amateur singer, just within two notes. Just like when you watch a professional athlete and an amateur athlete. You can tell within a matter of seconds who's who. And and yeah, as soon as they started breaking into the over the top, trying, like you could tell they were struggling to hit notes. It was like, oh, you know, like know the limitations. If you can't do it, don't do it. You know, so... And that's why we can play with it. Again, great track on terms of the instrumental. I'm sure the song itself was a really pretty song. It's just you stop listening because the vocal just kind of is like, all right, if I tune it out, it's pleasant enough. Mm. You know? All right. Um, I thought the song, once again, I agree with Joe. Once again, the instrumental great. Fire instrumental. 
really good. Um, sounds, man, I don't know who's been on this whole album, but the way it's been produced, great. Like, it has been wonderfully produced. The problem definitely is the vocalist. There's just no and if and buts about it. Uh, at least with this song, this guy, um, not a bad singer. Was but it one guy or was it collective? Oh, it could have been a collective. It sounded like one guy. But it sounded a lot like one dude, just in a lot of background he did, stuff. Yeah, he did a bunch of takes. But um, yeah, it just, oh. It, it's not bad. Uh, it's just not there on the caliber that it needs to be to really make this song pop. And that's what, like, the last few songs, that's the problem. And, um, I mean, listen, I'm not, you know, saying that, you know, a lot of these songs are, you know, trash because of the single, the singers and vocalists, but they just could have been better. And this is definitely one of them where I feel it could have been better, uh, but it just didn't hit that top notch um, because the vocalist just, he was good, just not good enough. I, it's, I, I suck to say that. But amateur. It, it was an amateur singer as opposed to a professional. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's just um, a little bit off. Some, Some's at least a little bit off with the vocals and it just makes you just kind of like tune it out. It just goes into the background. Mm -hmm. uh, good beats, good instruments, good mixes, but they should have got some better vocalists. Yeah. You know what it kind of reminded me of? It's like when you go to a steal game and that guy's like, man, in high school, I can throw a ball better than that Ben Ruthlisberger. Mm. And then you're like, okay, go up next to Ben Ruthlisberger and throw a ball and see what happens. And, you know, it's like, yeah, you fell short. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I can get that. Speaking of Ben Roethlisberger, I had to shave my goatee because the steel was lost. That was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. The Redskins. Come on, yeah. team Washington. Yeah, Washington now, yeah, Washington. Watch your bullshit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving in, this next track, oh, sorry, this next this track, truck, truck, this, this, this truck. next track <laughs> is fun called Frosty the Snowman. Everyone knows this one, Frosty but, but, but the Snowman. But wait, 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 tell them who it's by. Six feet deep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how deep Frosty the Snowman is. All right, so that's that all. That was good. Frosty, yeah, good. That good. <laughs> Frosty the Snowman, guys. Um, well, uh, who, I was like, did Mike go on this one? What do you think, Mike? I don't know, man. This is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting weird, bro. Yo, yo. The thumpity thump thump part. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's the song. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. This uh, is getting weird. I'm gonna have to say um, that is like filler music to me. Like, I I did not really pay like I, no, I didn't pay attention to that song to be honest with you. Like, it's definitely a song I could just totally like be in the store and walk and grab yeah, my groceries like, and get yeah, out of there. Yeah, like, that's generic holiday. Music. It's so well, generic. You, you know the thing? <laughs> it, it's it's a song that has been done so many times that you have to really do something special with it to catch your attention. And it's it's a song that's been probably done a million times by a million different artists in a million different ways. So you really have to do something unique to make it pop and stand out. And I, it, it it melted the snow, unfortunately. Yeah, it really did. I mean, the guy, again, another one of these guys who doesn't sound bad, but he's not a professional singer. Like you can just tell by the strength and the sound and their voice, it's not, it's not a professional thing. It's like, oh hey, what do, what do we owe you? Oh, come on in here, and, you know, what do you owe us? Oh, yeah, come in and do that track. It, it really, it really does. It just feels like he's just like, yo man, listen, you owe me a favor. Get on that track. Uh, my, my label's going under. I ain't got nobody here on the label left. Go, uh, go on. Snoop just signed with No Limit and Gray's. Created aftermath and Tupac dead. Get on the track. Yeah, this is bad. Um, we'll, we'll keep it moving though. At least Michelle <laughs> was laughable bad. This, yeah, this, was, this, this was is just, sad bad. Yeah, she's like, oh man, I feel sorry for you, dude. Like, yeah, you tried, but right, 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 right. You, 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 you failed. <laughs> it's okay though. I mean, hey, listen, I, I'm not on a professional track. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's alright. Yeah. Um, this next track, Oh Holy Night. So that was Oh Holy Night. Um, oh, holy shit. 
Uh, that was tough. But, uh, <laughs> Joe, what do you think? I'm going to let you go on that. Um, the whole time I'm hearing it, I'm thinking like, off the Vegas Strip in the casino down by the corner. Welcome, B-G-I-O-T-T-I, or whatever the hell their name is. They sound like cruise ship singers. They sound like Vegas Strip, off the Strip singers. Again, semi-professionals, not bad singers, just not... Like, if I'm buying an album... And back in the day, this probably cost me $25, new CD. That's not what I want to hear. Mm. You know, if I'm spending $1.99 at the Walmart bargain bin, it's like, okay, yeah, this dude. is what I expect. Yeah. But when I'm spending 25 bucks for a Death Row Christmas album, I'm not expecting that. No. Not a bad track. Instrumentals, again, fire. Just the production on this is top-notch in terms of music. And it, they... This, like I said, might be the best musical production, aside from Soundgarden, I think, that we've done so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, obviously music production-wise, um, wow, it's, it's good. Every song is popping. Um, but, oh my gosh, yeah, the vocalist, woo. Uh, listen, not bad, but not, you no, know, it doesn't have that level of quality, like, it's not there, um, you know, in, in a professional vocal sense. It's just not there. And uh, you can hear it and you can tell. And um, as soon as she started singing Holy Night, I said, nope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even like, yeah. it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was like, nope, 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 nope. That's nope. it. Nope. That's it for me. You know, it was, yeah, I got turned off immediately. Uh, for and, the, you, and, and, and you would think being a studio album, you could doctor that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one yeah, thing it sound, live. It sounds too live. That's what I was thinking. Well, too, like. and I like I go back to what I said a couple of tracks ago. I, I do think that these particular types of tracks are being recorded live. Mm -hmm. You know, because the, the the way the instrumentals coming off, they're they're definitely not being recorded in stereo. I don't think. They're definitely in mono. I think. Cause, yeah. Because Elton are. John records a lot of stuff in mono, and it sounds more live than you know. But because I don't know why, it just picks up different. Yeah, it's it's not. It, yeah, it definitely sounds more live, but it's they they could have did a better. I feel like they could have did a better job with this because vocally, yes. Yeah, it's just not popping vocally. What do you think, though, Blake? No, I agree. Um, it sounds like it's just a live. Sounds like a live church recording. You know, tricks. Church. Church. Oh, uh, tricks. I'm like, yeah, tricks for kids. Yeah. Church. <laughs> it might have been a trick. Preach. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, so it sounds like one of them CDs that you get from the church, you know. Best of Lifetime Gospel. Something mm. like that. Yeah. Except there's some really good gospel albums out there. Mm. I don't know. Not mm. impressed. No. no. Yeah, me it's, either. This keeps getting, it's kind of dragging on at this point. Yeah. yeah. What's next? Yeah. We got Party for the Homies. All right. So let's see what this one's about. All right, so... That song right there, ladies and gentlemen. It happened. Party for the homies. <laughs> there was no partying. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go on this one. Uh, yeah, that was the worst song of this album so far. Worst song. I'm saying it right now. Uh, even the instrumental. We're not done yet. We're not done, but so far, so worst far. song. So okay. far, worst song. Instrumental, bad. Um, vocalist, bad. It was just all over bad. Like they they needed to do something. Is this getting way different? And Brandon trash. Th this might have to get. Yeah, I'm about, uh -oh. to, I'm about to put trash you on trash it. Trash this one. Oh, <laughs> yo, on, I'm about to trash this one. This song is trash. Facts, oh, okay. No. And it, just, it really was. Like everything about it. Yo, like this. It just sounded. The they trash. were trying to Brandon sound trash. cool. They were sound trying to sound cool. It just didn't come off as cool though. Like party for the homies. Like no, 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 no. Like you gotta go hard, and they didn't go hard. It just sounded like little kids party. Like it's a tea party. This ain't no like party party. Tea party. That's like a tea party. All right. No, 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 no. no party no. for the little homies. No, no. Yeah, for the little homies. For right. little tea. For the little tea. That's right. For <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm labeling this one as trash. Um, Mike, what would you think it. of you it? You heard it, man. It's a, it's a Brandon approved trash, Yo, so I'm it's going trash. with it. Trash. Facts. Facts. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, 
So I'm thinking as a, uh, oh, what is that about, 13, 12, something like that at 96, maybe 14. Uh, th this would have been a cool song at, at, at that time for me. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 buddy, for the homies. It's kind of catchy. It is. It is catchy. But it, it reminds me of, like, watered-down Will Smith and watered-down <laughs> wow. Tony, Tony, Tony. <coughs> and, like, not nearly as good. Uh -oh. So what happens is when you listen to it 30 years later almost, or 25 or whatever, you realize it sucked. It really sucked. And, and the, 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 the thing is, they were trying so hard to be, you know, like, y'all, this is the homies, this is the party. And, and, and it just come off, like, silly. Mm -mm. It came off silly. Yeah, like, Trash. Montel Jordan did it way better. <laughs> yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. yeah. You want a party, right. you get Montel Jordan. Right, that was right. So, yeah, yeah that, I mean, he did. He sounded like a, a knockoff Montel to yep. me. Yeah. You know. Montel's a big-ass dude, by the way. I've met him. He's like six, 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 seven. Jeez. Like I was like, holy shit, this guy's massive. Hmm. Does he have any other tracks? Besides oh yeah, yeah. Uh, get it on tonight. Oh yeah. Get it on tonight. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, you that gotta is get a fire some panties off that before get it on tonight. That is a fire track. That is a fire track. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, this next song, this guys. Oh. He had this and that too. Oh. I think it's called this and that. It was off the same album as this. That would do it. Come on. Uh, <laughs> This next track, guys, is called White Christmas. Wow. Well, that was White Christmas. Gosh. I think Suge was on some white stuff when he said, let's go and make it with these two guys. Yeah. Um, Joe, what'd you think of that? All right. So you take the most iconic Christmas song ever, more covers than any other Christmas song, and you give it to these two guys? I mean... Danny Boy isn't available? <laughs> Seriously! Like, I would have rather listen to Michelle. I mean, oh, bring back Nate Dog? <laughs> Anything? Bring back Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Snoop Dogg? Yeah. I mean, I would I mean, Snoop can't sing, but at least he could be entertaining. Like, oh, that's all. Okay, so. Yeah, no. No, I mean, no. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Guys. I, I felt like I was being touched by an uncle during it. I guess. Oh, no. Yeah, listen, I'm going to keep it real, guys. Uh, I felt like I was being uh, inappropriately uh, felt. Listen, I'm just saying. And I'm pretty, Listen, I don't like to hate on vocalists or singers or anybody. But a few a, a, a few times that that vocalist was singing, um, it... It felt, Did, creepy. it felt very creepy, very creepy, like it, it inappropriately creepy. Like, take your kids, hide your kids, you know, um, because you don't know what's gonna happen. And that's what, what I felt. White Christmas is he talking? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just it just felt very inappropriate the whole song, um, and I can't stand behind that. What'd you think? That was Mike? trash. That was hard to listen to. Ooh, Mike trash. <laughs> I'm trash in that one. Wow. It, it, you know, it, it was like watching a Hall and Oates video. Like, you, you love Hall and Oates the music, but when you're watching the video, you get that weird kind of like, mm, like they're a little too close for comfort here. You know, <laughs> they're singing into each other's eyes just a little too much for my liking. And, uh, and yeah. that's what I got the vibe from this song. You know, um, yeah, that was. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. It was tough. I'm glad it was all over. We're, we're slipping. And a half. We got Danny Boy up next. Danny yeah. Boy, bring it back for yeah. us, buddy. Yeah. Bringing it back. All right, this song is called This Christmas. All right, so that song was This Christmas. Man, it had Danny Boy. You go ahead, Mike. Danny Boy killed it, man. Uh. Danny Boy out here killing it too bad. It's his last song. It is his last song. Mm -hmm. Danny Boy, man. Danny Boy. <laughs> this should have been Death Row's Christmas. Featuring Danny Boy and special guest. Like, the, Danny Boy pretty much owns this album. They should have launched his career superstar with this album. And instead, they got schmucks. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's, uh, that's a good track right there. That's a really good track. And I, and I even said to, to these guys, I said, you know, when you hear Danny Boy singing compared to the last three or four tracks, the, the, he's a professional singer. Like the vocal range, the control, the pitch, the just it's like that's a singer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows how to 
change octaves and all that yeah. stuff that you need to know how to do if you right. really want to sing. You right. Know? But yeah, that was fire. That was hot. Yeah, I thought it was great, man. Uh, Danny Boy killed it. He slayed this track. Um, no pun intended for a Christmas album. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, I wish. Uh, it's hard to say this, and you know, it might be unpopular for some people, but I almost wish he was on every single track. Every yeah, single no, track. I, I agree. This uh, should be. This should have been his vehicle. Yeah. You know. It was amazing, but um, yeah, what do you think, Joe? What's your full opinion? Absolutely brilliant. I mean, yeah. the, I wish it. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually when I get done listening to this, I'm going to go out and try to see if he's done anything else as Danny Boy, and just kind of see, you know, albums, whatever, and want to hear more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I they've sold me on this Danny Boy guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's been a couple good tracks other than his, but man, he has just solidified the the album he should be the only guy on the album i don't know if they ran out of money to pay him and you know we get you three or four tracks but man especially some of the holiday classics they covered with those other schmucks yeah you know, that, that danny boy mm-hmm. danny boy danny boy yeah um agreed so we're moving into the next of the last track and this is called have yourself a merry little christmas Okay, well, that song was called Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. We did not. Yeah, that was, I don't know how merry I felt, um, but it wasn't very merry. Mike, what'd you think? Would you have a Merry Christmas? Nah, man, that one was bad for me. Mm. I don't know, man. They're just, I don't get it. They're, they're, they're not good enough to be on professional tracks. They're, they're good singers in a, in a small little armory with like you know 50 friends and family and you know oh yeah my boy he the greatest i could see that but you put them in a studio with professional musicians and i think that's the other thing too let's not discredit the musicians that are playing on these tracks because they are professionals their their techniques everything are just so good that it that it that it the, the badness of the singers actually probably comes out even more mm-hmm. because the instrumentals are so good. Right. If the instrumentals sucked and they sucked, it'd be like, okay, well, the whole thing is just... Yeah. And I think just one thing is so good and the other thing is not that it just makes it so much more dramatic of a... Ooh, well, yeah, and these songs have been done so well. Right, right. and they've been done so many times. Yeah, How do you so, you gotta you gotta step your game up with Christmas songs? Yeah, you're, right, you're going against a lot of competition. Right, it's right. Not very impressive. Yeah, you know exactly. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I personally thought that the instrumental was amazing, but uh, the vocals six feet deep should have been stayed there. <laughs> well. I mean, dang, dang. What I will say is that, uh, yeah, they uh, they needed to not be on this track, put it that way. Um, that that's just my opinion on it. But uh, it's like it, when uh, you go, like I was saying, when you go, when, well, you guys probably don't remember, and out there maybe not remember. There used to be bookstores, and you'd buy like fifty or sixty dollars in books, and they'd give you a free holiday CD, and then you'd look at them and be like, oh yay, and then you listen to it and you go, oh great. And, your mom would have it playing on the CD player in the car at nauseum when you were a little kid because she's like, oh, yeah, this is good music while we're going to grandma's house. And it's like, for whom? It's just, you know, and, and then, you know, <laughs> just, just uh, yeah. Yeah, it's rough. It's like them CDs they sell at Starbucks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like you find like one really good up-and-coming artist and then the rest is all Jack Johnson songs. <laughs> And you're like, wow, I didn't know how many different ways we could make banana pancakes today. <laughs> like, just saying. <laughs> Nothing against Jack Johnson, but like his music is the definition of bland, vanilla, sleepy music to me. Uh, yeah, it's definitely... That and, and Nora Jones. Mm-hmm. Very pretty vocal, very pretty yeah, she... very pretty instrumentals, yeah. but her songs... I don't know why. Like the early 2000s with some of that stuff, man. I don't know what like it, we went from like hardcore new metal and and grunge and to like oh here let's take a volume world. <laughs> yeah, it got popular though. They did. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Yeah. All right, so we have come up on the very last song, ladies and gentlemen. The very last song. 
of this album. Oh, really? I wanna wait, 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 wait. Are we gonna get Santa? Oh my god. Santa! Oh, god. All right. What is it called? It is called Christmas Every Day. Yes, Santa! Uh, but the artist is called Guess. So uh, mm. let's not get too hype. But we're gonna come back. And let you guys know what we thought of this song and what we're going to rate this album. <laughs> Christmas every day. Not um, a fair singing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was that was tough. Um, well, was that his actual family or was he just saying that because like that was like their click? Like, <coughs> like I, Because if it was his actual family, they were the greatest singers ever. <laughs> they loved everything about them and uh, they should all have major record deals. <laughs> Shug's family, multi-talented. Oh my gosh, jeez. Um, that was a tough one. That was a tough one, guys. Um, okay, so I'll just break it down. Instrumental, very like poppy. You got that that nice it pop, to funky, the funky, and just funky. That that bass was pop. I love that instrumental. Yeah, yeah gosh, another man, banger. banger. But then, as soon as guests came on, guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it went downhill quick. Uh, <laughs> if you listen to the track, you will know what we mean. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, oh, it was bad. Um, yeah, it was once again like a thing where I feel if we had Danny Boy on this song, it could have been a whole different vibe. Like, here, here's my thing. Whole different. Like. I mean, at this point, I'm sure Shug had some money still. Why couldn't he even go out and be like, listen, let's get Barry J. Blige. Let's get, you know, even like one-offs. Like, you mm -hmm. know, let, let's get some artists that like could come in here. Unless he had such a stank on him that nobody wanted to be around him. Mm. That he's like, okay, we know this guy's like what he's all about. Let's just, you know, yeah, stay away. Um... Yeah, I just, I don't know. That's all I really cared about. The, the instrumental was hot, but yeah, I guess pff, not it. Not no. for this track. No, no. no. I guess that's not happening. What'd you, what'd you no. think, no, Mike? No. It, bro, it sounded like a knockoff of something I've heard before. Mm. The bass line is from something else. Yeah, I was trying to think of it, too. I mean, it's good. That comes from something else, and it's probably... Well, a way better track than that was. <laughs> well, the the thing is, is too, is a lot of Death Row's music um, was sampled from James Brown, uh, Isaac Hayes, well, yeah, Parliament, think, all that. Mm. You know, that's what made it good. But at the same time, they also put their own little spins on it. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, when you're covering Christmas songs. Yeah, just because most of them are public domain, that means anybody can really get their hands on one and just kind of do what they want with it. You gotta really just do something that's just like, whoa. And for the most part, most of the ones that, aside from Danny Boy did, were not, whoa. It was like, mm -hmm. whoa, in a whole different way. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah. So, so what, are we, guys, what are we thinking on a... <coughs> couch scale? On a couch scale. What's, we're doing what's... couch or mistletoe. Oh. What do you guys want to do? It's a holiday or stockings. Oh. How many stockings is this? You want to do stockings for stockings. the Christmas? Stockings. Okay. Out of ten stockings, stockings. What, do you, ten stockings. What, what do you give it? Um, I will start. Yeah, you can start this one. I'm actually going to give this one a seven. Oh. Out of ten. And here's why. Instrumentals, most of all of them were great. Musically, Artists were amazing when it came to instrumentals. That's why I'm giving it the 7 out of 10. Every single, almost every single instrumental I enjoyed and would listen to freely. Um, the reason why it's not getting a higher score for me is because some of the artists on this album, horrible to me. Um, not horrible, but not, they don't make the songs any better. If, if anything, they make the songs worse. So that's why I'm not giving it anything above a 7. Um... But yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the quality, the production of this album, on point, there's no question about it. I think that uh, they had something special going on in this album, um, and it could have been launched even further with the right artist. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't, but um, yeah, like I said, the, the biggest highlight to me 
was the instrumental uh, that I was getting. And I think those studio artists uh, did an amazing job. And so, yeah, seven out of ten stockings this holiday for me. What do you think, Joe? Uh, I'll let Mike go, actually. <laughs> All right, Mike. Let Mike go. Um, I already decided a couple songs ago it's a six. Mm. Okay. Six out of ten, man. It's um, There's some good tracks on there. Um, I want to hear more of my, my man Danny Boy. So I'm definitely going to check him out when I get back to the crib, see what he sounds like. Um, but, yeah, six out of ten, I think, um, is, a, is a fair in my opinion because i'm not really i don't really like christmas music that much anyway so yeah but for what it was it was you know for me six out of ten <laughs> all right um yeah i'm i'm gonna go with uba i'm, I'm gonna say a seven out of ten uh I, I i would say this is the second or third best album we've reviewed um you know uh i mean i'm not trying to be biased because i picked them but you know <laughs> Soundgarden was probably the best album we reviewed. Yeah, and, it was high. Uh, yeah. You know, this was damn good. Uh, the Nas one was damn good, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, so I, I will say that it's a 7 out of 10. I agree with you 100%. The instrumental throughout this whole thing, even the bad instrumental track that you thought was trash, trash. was still better than a lot of some of the stuff we've heard. Um, <laughs> but um, all in all... If it was a couple different artists on a couple different tracks, this actually might be an eight or a nine, um, and I mean that literally. Like this was a surprisingly good album on certain levels, and then certain levels it was like, okay, this is what you expect from a Death Row Christmas album. So, um, yeah, seven seven out of ten uh, stockings is uh, is what I'm gonna go with it too. All right, okay. Um, yeah, I, I would have to, I would have to rate that since there's two seven out of tens. We'll just go ahead and give it a final score of six, seven. Six and a half or well, seven? Six and a, well, well, two sevens and then a six, six. So, so. would that take it down a half? Uh, I'm going to jump into a seven. All right, I'm going to jump into a seven. I think it's a solid all seven. Right. I think it's a solid seven. Is, is, is Mike's feelings are That's the good. highest scored album, isn't it? No, I think so Soundgarden far? got like an, a nine or an eight, didn't it? Yeah, I think it got a little higher. I have to go. Yeah, I have to go back. Yeah, because there's only like one, maybe two bad songs on the Soundgarden album. Mm -hmm. So, that, that we thought, anyways. Yeah. But, because, and then uh, the uh, Nas album got like a seven or a six, too, right? So, you're saying this is at the same level as Nas and Damian Marley? Um, in different ways, yes. Because, like, okay, I'll, I'll clarify. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about Instrumentally, that. Instrumentally, <laughs> yes. this yes. was better than the Damien and, and Nas. Only because with the Damien and Nas album, there were a couple straight fire tracks on that, but then they started to sound a lot alike at certain points. Like, they were just flowing into one another and it sounded like a lot of the same tracks. Um, vocally, no. No, there were a few artists on here that blew Nas and Damien Marley away, like Danny Boy and... The first rap song that we listened to were, was... Snoop was on that. Yeah, yeah, this one with Snoop was just a damn good rap track, even mm -hmm. if it was a Christmas track or not. <coughs> However, then there was Six Feet Deep and Michelle and... Guess. And, and guess. That's what killed it for me, man. Like, you can have right. the best production in the world, but I don't really listen to music for production. I, I want to hear the vocals. Well, yeah, but yeah. like, if it, if but it like Danny and Marley, vocals, you can't understand him half the time. Well, yeah, not saying that he's not he's entertaining. Doing, he's doing the... Um, you know, he's doing the... Rastafari, yeah. uh, Jamaican. Yeah, I get it, because he is. But the, at the same time, some of not... See, the thing I also look at with Nas is, like, with guys like Nas and Snoop and Biggie and all that, I put their their scales right here for me because I know they're great. I know they're, like, the best of the best. So when they don't come with that A game every single time... Uh, like, I, don't get me wrong, everybody has an off track or two. Mm -hmm. But, like... Some of Nas's stuff on that album was just like, all right, it's okay. It's Nas putting Nas stuff in his own. It was like, well, damn, this all is right. Nas being Nas. I feel you. Because <laughs> I don't know anything about Six Feet Deep, and then when I hear it, I'm like, well, now I know why. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Clearly. My bar was not high to begin with. All right. Well, guys, next time we have Mike here choosing 
the album. Yeah. We don't know what he's choosing yet, but it's his turn. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see what happens with the next time. We want to thank everybody for watching. Definitely, if you guys have any comments, like the videos. We'd love to hear feedback from you guys. Also, subscribe. We love to hear feedback, though. So definitely yeah. comment under if you have any suggestions for us. And we will keep doing a Three Dudes Review because we have a great time doing this. Yeah, we it's do. A, it's a lot of fun. We get so, out of the house, which is nice. It's, it's good stuff. Oh, it's good stuff. And it gets Joe out of the house. <laughs> it's me my hour of peace. Actually, uh, I also want to give another shout-out to uh, two Nicoles and one podcast. Definitely. We hope to do some uh, crossover stuff with you guys after sure. the new year. And, um you know, like I said, like B.A. says, hey, you guys want to tell us what you want us to play for you? Please do, because we like surprises. We like curveballs. We like going in raw and just be like, oh, hey, look at that. Guess what we have here? Yeah, because of, we're, I, I don't think we're very good at picking so far, man. No, we, I don't want to say some, we're... We've had some duds, man. I, I, we, need, we need some inspiration well, out no, here. I, I don't say we're bad at picking. I, I, you know, we, 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 we know what we know, and we go with it. Um... Obviously, you know, B.A. threw a curveball at us last week. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we all had high hopes for the Taylor Swift album. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, and then, you know, it wasn't, you know, anybody's fault. It just was not. It's Taylor's um, fault. Yeah, I mean, let's put it out. more drums. Right, yeah. he needs more drums. Uh, is this going to be the last one for the year, or do you think we're going to get one in before New Year's? Because... Mm. Next week is going to be crazy because... Oh, yeah. Next week... Well, no, no, not next week. Two weeks from now is going to be crazy because that's Christmas week and all that and New Year's and all that, so... Well, we can see what's happening for next week. If we right. can get one more in, yeah. we could try. Well, I didn't know if we should wish the folks a happy holiday oh, before... Well, we should definitely wish them Before, happy. If, if we don't. I mean, right, But then yeah. if we wish them happy holidays and then next week we'll put another review out, it's going to look <laughs> stupid, so... I don't know. <laughs> Guys, we definitely wish you guys a happy holidays. Hopefully, we may come with another review before uh, Christmas. But if not, uh, definitely happy holidays. We hope that, you know, you're weird. You know, I said you're weird. You're a you're, you're year. Weird. You're, you're weird. a year. No, no. This year has been weird. Yeah. And let's hope 2021 is not weird. Right. But so. it's not looking too shabby right now. Yeah. But you know what? No, let's take it back. Everything's going to be great. 2021, kick ass. And uh, from us to you, Feliz Navidad. Peace. Yes, it's a little bit off. Well, yeah, because she doesn't have a powerful voice. And she, like I said, <laughs> just... Shook, can I get on the album? <laughs> do that again? <laughs> Don't do that again. Don't do that again. 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 <laughs>